few months ago, early January, one of my colleagues here and I traveled to Calgary, Alberta, uh, to look at a machine. It's called Hemtrain, and it's a new processing for, for hemp fiber, and full plant processing. And this company in Calgary uh, has been working this for seven years, and we made a decision to bring the first Hemtrain uh, in commercial production to the U.S. It's going to be here in Redline. So we didn't know it. Hemp is a cannabis plant that was marijuana. They're really only separated by 0.3 uh, level of THC, the intoxicant molecule, the molecule that's psychoactive. But this article was, uh, this was a study sponsored by the tax money from the marijuana program, and one of my former colleagues at Hershey uh, studies colon cancer, and they did some tests with uh, cannabis extracts and different, different ratios of things like CBD and THC, the two things we always hear about. But the interesting thing from this study is that colon cancer cells were killed by a number of um, combinations of molecules from cannabis, not THC, and not CBD. And for us about to jump into a hemp industry, I think it's pretty exciting. And basically, that means hemp has those anti-cancer effects. So there's a lot more to this plant. Not just there's a lot of fiber and textiles, we'll talk about that, but there's a lot of pharmacology and pharmaceutical potential that can drive our hemp industry. Our vision at the end of the day is to create an organization that can work uh, with the farming community to drive growth and sustainability of industrial hemp um, and the North American farmer. At its core, the farming community, uh, as we all know, is the backbone of the U.S. And we envision the focus on industrial hemp to build an industrial uh, revolution. Through diversification, I think that we can all be a voice and support system for a pretty incredible. Um, the hemp train is a scalable solution for industrial and agro-processing and can handle demand of 2,000 pounds an hour uh, feedstock. So uh, it provides continuous operation for the most efficient production of uh, three fibers that are, that are under table. Just to review some of the uh, advantages above, and I think this is probably the first time for a lot of you to see really the differences between new technology and, and older technology, but we look at the production of, of vast fiber, the uh, hemp train uh, does that in a superior way, will keep the fibers intact, um, potentially making them uh, have a higher tensile strength, has the ability to change the, the herd granules, and there's a couple different size bags on your tables. Um, we can essentially, we can uh, tighten the size down of herd, and we can lengthen it to di different applications, whether it be catheter or, or chicken bedding or, or a number of different things that have antimicrobial effects, which is pretty, pretty interesting. Again, that microfiber stream is, is totally unlike any other system. Um, most decorigators will only get two products. They'll get mass fiber and herd, and the dust, which is 30%, typically in a hammer mill, goes off into thin air. That's the, the valuable part. So um, there's, a, there's a real value proposition here. Plug dust, quiet machine, and it's energy efficient. Uh, the the hemp train employs um, innovative high-speed uh, kinematic action producing tax uh, fibers, as we mentioned. Um, the cost of a, of a hemp train um, facility is much lower per ton or per hour of throughput than conventional decortication technologies that are out there, substantially less, 10x less. Um, it's a very similar output, which I think is, at the end of the day, will allow for a lower barrier of entry and will help jumpstart the, the North American hemp industry. Uh, the throughput of this machine is, again, very similar to machines 10x in size and cost. Um, the team at Maine Greenfield Technologies, I think it's going to be extremely critical to our success, especially in the short term. Uh, this is a group of highly skilled individuals that have spent the last six years um, focusing on the processing of industrial hemp and not just extraction. So there's, there's a lot of folks that are talking, they're talking about extraction. That'll be an uh, extremely important part of this industry. Um, but these folks have been specializing in processing. Essentially making this a scalable uh, venture. Um, so we all know in any new industry, especially in, in farming, it's extremely important uh, for a company to be well connected, um, individuals to be well connected to the community, uh, and be supported by professionals in the, in the field. We are lucky that Canada has been growing hemp for 20 years. Um, it's important that everyone here tonight realizes that we must learn and improve as quickly as possible to stay ahead of the curve in the space. And I think Pennsylvania has an opportunity uh, to become a leader in the space. Uh, they're the second state in the, in the union to uh, send a formalized plan to the USDA. So that's a really um, important thing and, and one that we want to take
taken advantage of. So uh, the Groff head, headquarters will be on Red Code Drive and, and Red Line. Initially start with 87,000 square feet of warehouse and office space. Uh, we'll, the uh, space is currently being remodeled by some of our new friends and owners of Triborough Construction Supplies. Glenn and then J.R. Rexroth, who are sitting here with us this evening. We look forward to creating new relationships, jobs, and helping to put South East PA on the industrial hemp map across the U.S. I'd like to introduce my colleague Paul Blymeyer. Uh, Paul has worked with our team over the last seven months and has focused uh, a lot on industrial hemp. Paul has a strong background in manufacturing, construction, you know, med device, building teams of people to carry out some pretty spectacular things in business and in life. Um, So we've all, or most of us, if, if you've heard of hemp, you, you may have heard people say, there's tens of thousands of things you can make from hemp. Okay, I, I say maybe, um, but I really want to focus on a few that uh, we can talk about today. So, as Taylor said, some of the samples of products on your table um, are going to be coming out of, of hemp train this fall. Um, and so some of the things I want to focus on are the, the bass fiber, the herd fiber, and the micro fiber. Um, very interesting, and you know, as, as we all have kind of dove into this, I've really learned a lot about all the products that can be uh, derived from hemp. Certainly, uh, a lot of us have heard the buzz about CBD and, and all the benefits of that, but uh, there's a whole other realm of products um, that we believe have longevity, um, and viability in, in America for use. Uh, but certainly the key to that is going to be building a supply to meet demands. So the herd fiber, which some of you have samples on your table of the herd stream and then the granulated stream. So if we basically take the granulated stream and we, we bag it, so I can just take some of this out for you. This is basically hemp. In a, in a tea bag or similar type package. This can be used to line the insides of your refrigerator, um, and it will, it will slow your fruit or vegetables from spoiling. Uh, some of the initial experiments that have been done with this, after 20 days, a tomato side by side is completely rotten versus one on this has shown no signs of, of decay or bacteria. It's been very interesting. One, one question might be, hey, all these products are great. What do you do with them, right? How do you, how do you sell them? Uh, luckily for, uh, for us, the team here at Windridge, um, as, as Steve and Taylor have mentioned, over the last five years of this business have done an incredible job um, creating relationships with retailers. So uh, certainly our beverages are uh, distributed across the East Coast, all the way from New York to Alabama. So if you go into a, uh, a Whole Foods in Atlanta, Georgia, you can buy our cider. And I say that because that's a viable path for us. So as we develop and, and, and manufacture and make these products in Redline, we have channels and outlets that we believe we can plug directly into, into the consumer market. And I think that's really important um, because I think we could focus on making products and that sort of thing, but we have to do something with them. Um, so that's one option for, for an outlet for us. You know, second option I just I, I want to want to mention too. We we uh, had the grand opening of, of Pharmacy Partners last Friday. This is a, uh, a hemp store. It's located on uh, on South Queen Street. So uh, you may have noticed if you've gone to convenience stores recently. Uh, in the region or in the area, you can buy CBD products in convenience stores now. So you can get gas and, and go in and get a milkshake and some CBD if you like. And uh, we found that the community has had a lot of questions about CBD and what that is um, and what hemp is. Um, so that was one of the reasons that we founded Pharmacy Partners and opened it because we wanted it to be a community resource, one to educate people, but then also a resource for people to come to 
for hemp products or wellness products such as uh, you know CBD products or hemp foods. We carry all of these uh, these products there, and uh, we had a we had a very successful opening last Friday when we opened. We nearly sold out of everything that we had in store, um, and uh, and luckily it have restocked now and and are kind of back up and going. But it's our goal to make farming hemp on a large scale a long term and profitable crop option for all farmers. Industrial hemp is rich in various fibers, and as Paul showed, there are many sustainable and healthy products that can be made from it. So with that said, this year, Prof. N.A. will be guaranteeing a minimum of $675 per acre of industrial hemp planted across the first 1,500 acres that we contract with. But why are we guaranteeing this? We want to encourage the farmers to farm them this year. We understand there is no crop insurance available at this point, but we want to help mitigate this risk. We believe with the help of many of you in this room that we can determine the best practices for growing industrial hemp in the mid-Atlantic and make Pennsylvania a leader in farming and researching hemp. These are two models that we have here. So going off of the $675 per acre guarantee for all of North America, if somebody were to plant 50 acres, so the second piece of this a 50 cent payout per pound delivered. Okay. If your average yield per acre in pounds was 2,000 pounds, across that 50 acres you'd end with 100,000 pounds in yield. Your guaranteed payout is $33,750. However, since with the 50 cent payout you surpass that, get whichever is higher. This is encouraging folks to have high yields, but also if they fall below this number significantly, they're going to be guaranteed a payout to cover their cost. The estimated cost per acre to grow hemp is about $675. And that, that includes uh, average land costs as well. But with that model of an average of 2,000 pound yield, the farmer could expect a profit above all costs of $325, or a net profit of $16,250. Again, this model is based off of 50 acres planted and a 2,000 pound per acre yield. We expect yields to be fairly high, probably higher than what others have experienced in the past because with our model and the hemp train, you are harvesting the entire plant from, from base the second model is a higher end of yield, same 50 acres, however with 4,000 pounds of yield uh, uh, on average per acre. That equates to 200,000 total yield in pounds. Total payout is $100,000. Again, if it's not well below that, our guarantee is 33000 to help mitigate some of that risk. Farmers will need to apply for their own hemp permit. We will be sending an email this week sometime that will include all of this info, along with the recommendations and the full SOP that we have put together that goes into more depth on how to farm industrial hemp. And it will also include a link that you can go to to fill out if you are interested in uh, contracting with us on a certain page. In summary, we believe that together with everyone in this room, we can change the world. This time, I'd like to pass it back to Dr. Groff to open it up for questions.